Great. Love it. Hey, I'm learning, right? <laughs> This is Thank exactly you. what this call is about. Like, this is perfect. What That's is right. Oh. This is exactly what it's about. That's awesome. The shift. Well, uh, thank you, Tony, for that introduction. Um, as many of you know, my name is Keith Fonseca. I'm now agency owner, uh, direct to my best friend and business partner, Ryan, agency director, Ryan Federico. Uh, we're in the Prabula family agency, you know, in the Martin Master Agency, all the way up to Edward Pritchett and can't tell you how grateful I am to be here at Symmetry Financial Group. Uh, there was so much that preceded this uh, that has gone on in my life that we could spend hours talking about, uh, but ultimately the gratitude that sunk in uh, to be here with you all today um, can't be expressed in words. First thing I'm gonna do, um, which some of you are not expecting, please, if you're on this call and you're here to learn, unmask, come on video. If we're going to do a training about virtual sales, you should be on video for virtual sales, right? We don't come here to listen and hide, right? I don't care if your makeup's not done. I'm not concerned if you got bed hair, right? Let's, let's connect. And that's how we do it when we're not showing pictures, when we're not showing our names. And if you don't, that's okay. I'll just, if you know me, I'll call you out, right? I'll specifically say your name. Why aren't you on video? Like Leanna is not on video and Tasha is not on video. Paulina Doe. Kyle Cambrell is here and he's not on video. Dude, we got to see Mexico or wherever the heck you are right now because it's always insane where he's from. Uh, real quickly to tell you a little bit about, you know, us, uh, our story. Uh, Ryan and I uh, came to Symmetry. Uh, we attended our first corporate overview in May of 2018. It was hosted by the uh, Kimbrell, Stubbs, Capistrano organization. I mean, it was there that we really discovered like this was the right place for us to be, right? And this is gonna be an amazing training and you're brushing your teeth. Hmm. Um, we discovered that this was, you know, an amazing place to be. I, I just remember Tony like outlining his process in the home. And I remember turning to Ryan saying like, I could do this. That sounds so simple. And come to find out two and a half years later, it is that simple. It's just that simple. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, like we went to multiple uh, national conferences. I didn't write a piece of business until I quit in April, 2019. So if you're sitting there wondering if I'm in the right place, is this the right company for you? Uh, Keith Fonseca quit this business in April of 2019. And I made one phone call when I quit. It was to Ryan Federico, who said to me, uh, you could quit if you want, but I believe you could be the number one producer at Symmetry Financial Group. And it wasn't until uh, later, a month later, two months later, we went to a boot camp on June 15th, 2019 in Irvine, California, hosted again by the Kyle Kimbrell, Darren Stubbs, Tony Capistrano organization that I discovered, hey, maybe I can be the number one producer at Symmetry Financial Group. Uh, because it was when Tony said these words that changed my career. He said, the reason, I have it on video on my phone. The reason I write $600,000 a year and you don't is because I focus on people who want insurance and you focus on people who don't. I was just like, oh my God, that's genius. Right. If nine out of 10 people we talk to today don't want insurance, how many of us are paying attention to them and not paying attention to the one? And if I want to write 10 apps today, then I just got to talk to 100 people. And as you hear Ryan break it down, it's just that simple. Right. The mindset behind what we're going to go through is that simple. Uh, but the reason I wanted to kick this off for any of you that have been on our videos, usually it's the other way around, is that it's, it's kind of come to this point. The people have reached out to me and said, hey, man, I love your scripts. I love your videos. You know, I'm doing what you're teaching us. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say this publicly for some time now. I didn't think of anything. The principal foundation of everything we've put together has been created by Ryan Federico. All the scripts, all the videos, everything we've done. I've not in my lifetime known a more brilliant, intelligent person than Ryan Federico. I know he'll be an equity partner. Like there's nothing I doubt about that. And here's where, you know, 
rubber meets the road for Ryan. He's been in sales for, I don't know what, 20 years now. He's done sales funnels for some of the biggest salespeople in the country. And when we got here, Ryan reached out to me and said, brother, I want to do this with you. Before we had licenses, before we had anything. And he said, you know, there's nobody I'd rather do it with. And then I just knew immediately there's nobody I'd rather do it with either. Because uh, when you hear what Ryan has to talk about today, you'll understand that this isn't hard. It's just a matter of understanding what we need to understand. So I'm so grateful to have him as a partner and a best friend. And uh, let's, you know, jump right into it. So Ryan Federico. Yeah, um, you know, I can I can certainly echo that. And thanks, Keith, for the kind words. You know, this, uh, I want to just say for everybody who's on this call right now, um, you are a part of one of the most spectacular organizations in Symmetry Financial Group. I can't explain to you the impact that this organization has had, uh, not only on my my career at Symmetry, but my life as a human being, as a father, as a, as a husband. And it sounds weird to say that, um, but it's it's true. And, and for those of you guys who are new and you haven't had a chance to get to a conference and to see people in person or to get to a, a local event, like I promise you when, when this year opens up and we're together again, you're going to be thankful that you invested the time now in these relationships because, you know, Tony Capistrano has had an incredible impact on my organization. Sean Kim has had an incredible impact on my organization. Frank Brennis has had an incredible impact on my organization. Um, I can tell you that the first, um, the, the, the actually was the second breakout session. I wrote my first application in July of 2018. And in August of 2018, Keith and I were at national conference in Washington, DC, and just blown away, not knowing what to expect. We just flew all the way across the country from California, like a month into the business. And the second breakout session we went to was Kyle Kimbrell um, building a, a nationwide agency. And we've modeled that, that exact training. And you, you, some of you guys have know, we've posted it in, in the Facebook group and stuff like that, the recording of it and the worksheet and everything. And we continue to model that building a nationwide agency. Sarah Pappas has, you know, drastically changed how we do things, you know? <laughs> and so I just, I just want to say like, you guys have the right people around you. And if there's, if you're worried about not being able to do this, or you're worried about making the transition, um, you, you guys are in the best spot that you could possibly be with everybody here because the, the agency that you're in is, is phenomenal. The only one correction that I would make to Keith is, you know, Keith saying, you know, uh, Ryan is the architect of this stuff. Symmetry Financial Group is the architect of this stuff. Hey, when, when people are talking about the script and like Ryan's revision of the script or Keith's revision of the script, all that script is, is the first like 10 minutes of Casey Watkins doing working older leads. And then the middle of that script is from Miranda Martin and Ben Miller doing aces on the phones. And the end of that script is from Gino Locklear and John Paul Vetter doing the tie down, right? That's all that script is. It's just a hybrid of symmetry training that's already out there. I didn't invent anything. Symmetry invented what works. We just put it together and, and, and are having success with it. And so, you know, when, when we, Come back to this point, like there's two things we're going to talk about today. The first thing we're, we're going to talk about, obviously, is virtual selling. Um, and then we're going to tie that up at the end with the critical period concept. I don't use the critical period concept anymore. I use what's called the equity protection plan. Um, same same thing. And, and we'll go over the differences between the two. But um, we're, we're going to cover those two things. But like, I wanted to start off with, with just one piece of uh, thought for everybody who's listening to this or everybody who's going to listen to this when we talk about virtual sales. Because we know that you know our agency, $1.3 million last year, only about 200,000 of it, less than 200,000 of it, like 150,000 of it was not done virtually. Everything else was done virtually. When we recruit people, we are not recruiting anybody who wants to go into the home. If somebody wants to go meet face to face, we usher them to a different agency. I have no interest in anybody who doesn't want to work virtually being within our agency. Why? Like, this is where we're going. Okay, this was this has always been where we are going. Think about it like this, um, and not not just a symmetry, right? This is like as a as a human race, as a people, as a country, as a society. 
we are trending to virtual selling. We're trending to virtual interaction. Even pre-COVID, we've been trending to virtual action. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, when we got into this business, how many uh, instant decision applications were there? This many. There were zero of them. Today, we have 10. Right, things like LexisNexis have come out, and AI underwriting, and you know, using big data to underwrite people, like electronic signatures. How many applications two years ago were just paper and couldn't be submitted electronically? How many carriers didn't accept DocuSign? Right, this is the way we're going as a society, and like you don't have to get on board, you don't have to do virtual sales, but if you're not going to learn how to do virtual sales, I would suggest building a really big team very quickly because you're gonna be obsolete soon, right? Like the, the, not because of symmetry, not because of the insurance industry, because people will be doing this regularly for their appointments with, uh, we worked, Keith and I worked for a uh, home improvement in-home sales company that uh, we worked there for a number of years. I was a sales manager and a sales trainer there and Keith became one of the top sales reps at that company. It was here in Southern California. Guess what? They're hundred percent virtual. Home improvement companies are doing their, their modeling and their measuring with satellite data and they're, they're designing 3D maps and they're selling online before they even go out to the house to meet the people and measure. Other industries are doing this. Doctors are doing this. Prior to COVID, there was online telesales visits and or teledoc visits or Zoom visits or things like that. So as as a people, we're headed in this direction. And so, um, like, I guess what I want to challenge everybody to think about is: Do you really want to get good at this? Not like it would be cool if maybe I was good at it or like, yeah, that would be all right if I could do some virtual selling. Do you want to get good at it? Right? I, I liken this to golf. As a lot of us play golf, I play golf, right? It, it, if you want to get good at playing golf, what do you do? Go to the driving range. You uh, pay for some lessons maybe from a professional or somebody who's better than you. And then you play golf. That's how you get better at it, right? Uh, you maybe buy some accessories, uh, but that's how you get good at playing golf. And, and you can liken this to any other activity, any other hobby that you might have. But if we, if we do the same thing here and we go, okay, well, what's our driving range? Our driving range is doing stuff like this. Get on with people, right? Get on with family, get on with friends, get on with colleagues, put yourself on video. Think about how your background looks. Right. Think about how your lighting is. Uh, do you sound good? Some of you guys uh, can't see it right now because it's out of screen, but I'm talking to you on a USB microphone that's on a on a mount. Guess what? This microphone was like a hundred dollars, and this this mount, uh, you know, Keith's got one on his desk too. This mount was like thirty bucks. Yeah, but I sound way better than I would have sounded on my you know, iMac uh, microphone or whatever on on my laptop microphone or on my AirPods. So it's like. What are we doing on that driving range? Are we practicing? Are we taking shots? Are we practicing uh, how we transition slides? Are you doing a screen share and going, how does this look? Have you recorded yourself going through the slides just like you would record yourself doing a phone call and sending it to your mentor? Have you rewatched? Oh, I don't really like the way that that looks. Have you thought about yourself as the client? If you were sitting on the opposite end of the screen and you saw yourself on the screen, would you have trust? Would you believe that this person is credible? Would you buy from you, right? Like that's our, that's our driving range, that's our practice. And our lessons are, man, like there isn't anything different that we can tell you about virtual sales than Sarah Pappas did last Monday on the national call that was recorded. That's on the, the Pappas uh, Facebook, uh, or sorry, the Pappas YouTube channel. That was the most incredible how to set yourself up for success in virtual selling that I've ever seen. Um, the, the stuff that we use in the home is no different or you know, on, on, in the sales process is no different than we've heard from Gino Locklear and John Paul Vetter and um, you know, Elijah Carujo and, and Grant Reynolds and all the people who've done these Thursday sales training webinars that are all on the telesales page. Are you seeking out instruction? Are you spending some time, just like you would spend some time going to get a golf lesson that, that you'd have to pay for? You'd have to pay for a golf lesson from a pro. You don't have to pay for lessons from a pro here. Okay, but are you spending time going to those resources and getting some improvement on your game? And then playing. You have to play golf to get better. 
are you running a certain number of your appointments every week virtually? Or are you just going, oh, you know, maybe I'll get to virtual later. Are you too gun shy to set 10 appointments virtually? Right. And, and you're just like, oh, I'm just going to set them all in person and hope for the best. Maybe someday I'll learn how to be virtual. That's like me saying someday I'll learn how to play golf and never go into the golf course and playing. Okay. So we, we have to make sure that we're at least, if you want this, if you want this, that you're at least going after it with, you know, the, the same vigor and the same tenacity that you would go after learning a hobby um, and, and something that you're passionate about, especially if it's going to be your career. And if you don't want to learn this, totally fine. Don't learn this, right? Just do everything in person. Again, I'm gonna suggest you build a very big team very quickly. And the great news for you is Symmetry Financial Group is the fastest vehicle that you can build a big team in very quickly. So you're in the right place to build a big team. But sooner rather than later, this is all gonna be virtual. And, and for those of you who are like, well, I don't know, it's been done like this for years and we've always done face-to-face -face and kitchen table. Select quote has been selling this way for 15 years and they IPO'd at $4 billion. They've never seen a person in home, right? Uh, AARP, uh, Colonial Pen, uh, Globe. They've all been doing virtual and telesales forever. This is actually probably more people annually buy insurance virtually than buy in insurance face-to-face. -face. It's just a, a fact, it's just a stat throughout the entire industry. So it works. It's been working. There are awesome methods that work. There are uh, three top 10 producers in Symmetry Financial Group in 2020 that were 100% virtual. Okay, so it works. We're the problem. And so that's kind of where we wanted to start off with is like, it's us that's the problem. It's us believing that we can do it. It's us believing that we can make it work because we have to change and we have to adapt and we lack the self-confidence. It's us that's the problem. And so when we get the mindset out of the way, that's kind of the first thing. So we're gonna go through uh, three things real quickly here uh, that we call the map. Keith Fonseca developed this, we call it, we call it the map. And uh, it's mindset action process. And then right after we go through the map, we're gonna run through this pretty quickly. Um, we're gonna talk about the critical period concept and sort of how to prepare for that. So Keith, do you wanna take over the, the mindset and how do we get from the place where you know, we're doubting that we can do this to where we know that we can do this. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. So um, I'm, I'm a big believer in acronyms. They help me stay focused on what I'm looking at. One day this just, you know, came to me after, you know, kind of learning this through uh, different uh, folks that, you know, this whole thing comes down to a map, right? And really creating that map for ourselves and, and setting ourselves on a path to what is very simply an easy digestible process, but everything, and I mean everything, before we get on the phone, before we get on Zoom to do an appointment, before we meet with our team, before we wake up in the morning, I'm talking everything. I'm talking the gym at 6 a.m. I'm talking the miracle morning. I'm talking prep meals. I'm talking uh, you know, how I relate and connect with my family everything starts with the mindset. So let's go into that. Uh, the mindset in virtual sales is 100% preparation, right? Preparation for what people are really actually showing up for. And it was Ryan who said this to me, he said it to a number of folks. I, I love this. We sent them a letter. They took the time to fill it out carry it to a mailbox, send it back in. Or they picked up a phone and pressed the buttons. Num the number for T, the number for O, the number for N, the number for Y. Like, just think about the time it takes to do that. Then we receive that, we call them. Seven out of 10 people we call are like, I never did that, get off my phone, click. But we get to those folks that we call and they're like, yeah, and they give us all kinds of information. Then we send them a link and say, show up here at this time. And they do. Do you think after jumping through all those ho hoops, those people want to buy insurance? I mean, like after I've done all that and now I'm on a screen with you and I know you're an insurance representative, you're a field underwriter, you're an agent, like I've come to buy insurance. But most of us, our mindset gets in the way of 
darn, are they going to buy today? Am I going to make money? Will I be able to make this sale? And all of that is eliminated, right, by a, a, a Carlton layer. If you find my SoundCloud, uh, DJ Debt Free on SoundCloud, and there's a four minute clip. Carlton did the four keys to a successful week. And the last four minutes, he talks about insecurity. What is insecurity? Insecurity is broken down to a lack of confidence and a lack of belief. How do we get confidence? We do the things we say we're going to do. And how do we get belief? We do the things we know we should do. When I get confident and I have belief, then I'm secure. When I'm secure, all I do is prepare. Right, so what are we really preparing for? And forgive me, I, I'm moving parts on the screen here for this slideshow. Number one is prepare the intention, right? I know the steps to follow. Uh, we have a really great video out there that's just basically based on all kinds of different sound clouds that have been at Symmetry. Uh, we call it asking for the business six or more times, right? Uh, there's people on this call uh, who have reached out and said, hey, all I did was watch that thing and I do it over and over and it taught me how to prepare and now I'm closing business. Right, Shannon, how much have you closed in your first two months watching that video? About? Uh, I did 27 in December and I'm at 37 for January. So what did far. you do? What did you do prior to this work? I was a dental hygienist. How much training, insurance training did you go through before you got to this work? Only stuff I found on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever in your mind uh, struggled with mindset, with insecurity? Yes. Like five weeks ago, six weeks ago, I was standing in my kitchen bawling because I didn't think I could do this, you know? How many times have you done a virtual sales presentation? Mm, now, probably I do eight to 10 a week. So what, 60, 70 by now? Perfect. So you know what to prepare for, right? You know to prepare. Thank you, Shannon. You know to prepare the intention, right? I know the steps to follow. You know to prepare for the objection. Let's do that real quickly, right? Uh, Kyle posted it. We did a national uh, Monday call, Ryan and I. I mean, I got four questions to a buying yes, right? Number one, what is your goal for this appointment? I, I do this on every call doesn't matter who they are. What's your goal for this appointment? Nine out of 10 are going to say, well, I've come here to get mortgage protection to protect my family in case something happens. Okay, great. Number two, why is that important to you? So the first one's the logic. The second one's the emotion. Why is that important to you? Well, isn't that kind of a given most people say to me? Yeah, it is, but I want them to say it. I want them to sell themselves on I'm here because if my family, something happens to me, my family is not protected, right? Number three, so are you saying that if you don't get some protection in place, your family won't be able to stay in the home? It's just kind of like deduction. You're here for mortgage protection. You love your family, so you want to make sure they could stay. If you don't get protection, are you saying they can't stay? Most people are like, yeah, they can't. Number four, then we should probably put some protection in place today. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Boom. That's a number one buying yes. From there, it's like smooth sailing. Now, what's the main objection that people come up with that we don't prepare for, right? And in our past work, I went to Ryan one day and I was like, dude, every time I go to an appointment, they tell me it costs too much. And you know what he said? Well, why don't you just expect them to say that? I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. So then I started preparing. And as soon as I said they cost too much, I would go right into my thing. So here, what are people going to say at the beginning? Like, why did you come here? Well, I came to get prices. I came to get quotes. Okay, great. Uh, you could get quotes on Google, right? You could go to a number of different places. You can look up mortgage protection quotes, life insurance quotes. Why did you take the time to show up on this Zoom with me if you're just looking for quotes? Well, I figured you could give them to me. Yeah, absolutely I can. But why are you looking for mortgage protection in the first place? Oh, well, I want to make sure my family can stay in the home if something happens to me. Oh yeah, why is that important to you? Boom, we're right back into the cycle. Now, when we get to that last one and I say, well, we should probably put some protection in place today, wouldn't you agree? And they go, yeah, if it's affordable. And I go, perfect. That's the number one rebuttal that Symmetry has put out. Okay, great, that's exactly why we're here. That's my job. My job's not to sell you insurance. 
My job is to create options for you. So here's what we're going to do. Boom, right into the role and purpose. We're going to review your medicals. We're going to do a financial snapshot because some people think they need more insurance than they really need. Then I'm going to present you options. You're going to pick the one that makes the most sense. And then we're going to fill out an application because you don't even know, we don't even know if you'll qualify. That came straight from Miranda Martin and Ben Miller. But why do I know this cold? Because my mindset is of preparation and I know what to expect. I know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen throughout any virtual sale appointment. And as soon as they say something, boom, I've got my response and I'm prepared. Now, just to back up a little bit before we move on to assumption, uh, excuse me, action, which we'll pass it back over to Ryan. There's got to be a connection, right? And this is a little bit what I'll say, you know, I'm kind of known for. It's vulnerability. Just think about the weight of this pregnant pause I'm using right now. You're just waiting for me to say something. You hear the silence. You feel your heartbeat. This is how we connect over a screen. And unless you believe you can do that, there's no point. But I'll tell you what, I'm in New Jersey. I don't know if any of you are in New Jersey, but I feel the people sitting here right now, right? I see people I care about and love like Kim Skinner. And I, 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 I know we're connecting right now because I feel it. Can you feel that? Do you feel that? It's Casey Watkins who said, let the silence do the work. How often do we ask people real questions about them? Right, and I have those questions prepared. You know, it's not just Kim, how's your day? Oh, my day is really great, whatever, whatever. Okay, is your family okay during COVID? Because I know it's a tough time. Yeah, you know, we've been through some things. You tell me about that. Now Kim's opening up. Do you think that's someone Kim wants to work with? who's gonna ask the hard questions and really open up with them? 100%, are you willing to do that? Do you do that with your own family? So really vulnerability is a big key to this. And if you're not ready to get vulnerable, right? Ask yourself, why not? What's holding you back? Because if that's holding you back, that's probably what's holding your clients back. Same exact thing. And how yeah, do we release that? I think Keith, before you go on, before you go on to the next yeah. slide, you know, so we're, Tony is intentioning, wanting to talk about critical period, wanting to talk about, you know, um, equity protection plan or something like that. Like that starts here and go back, Keith, go back. Oh, I'm that sorry. Starts, that, that starts here. And the reason why it starts here in mindset back, Keith. I'm so learning this like slideshow. Control. Am I there? The reason, okay. the reason why that starts here is because of what Keith said first. If you believe they filled out a letter, they walked it to their mailbox, they talked to you on the phone, they gave you all their information, they set an appointment with you, and then they showed up for that appointment, and you believe that means that they want to buy insurance, and you go into that meeting going, these people definitely want to buy insurance rather than like, oh my God, I need to make money. If I don't make money, I'm going to be broke. Oh, you know, and Because that's what happens with new agents is we don't have the belief that they're there to buy insurance, that we're going to have that success. And so what happens is you come in and you're like, oh my God, we're in a virtual sale. And like, hi, I'm, my, my name's Ryan. And um, you know, wh why'd you guys fill this letter out? And oh, if, if something happens with my family, I want to be taken care of. And okay, it's $386. And they go, all right, thanks. We're going to think about it. Right? We abandon our process. We forget that there's any steps to the sale at all. Right? We forget that we need to build rapport. And the one thing that I would just say is, especially in this time in virtual sales, like think about where people are at. Where, do, where are people going? Most places in the country have, have mask mandates, right? Where you need to wear masks or you need to wear you know, at least some face coverings or be distanced from people. And so what are they not seeing? They're not seeing smiles from people. Right, like you may be the first smile that somebody's actually seen in a while, right? Of like of a of a person that's not just on TV that they can interact with who's smiling and who's happy, uh, especially if they've been watching TV because there's a bunch of not happy people on TV. I don't know if anybody's been paying attention to that recently, um, you know. So, 
having the mindset that you're there to help them, they want to buy insurance, you guys are going to figure this out together, alleviates all this. So when we get to the critical period, these questions that, that Keith is asking in the beginning, we should probably put some coverage in place today, right? And they're like, yeah, it doesn't matter if that's $10,000 of coverage, it doesn't matter if that's uh, $500,000 of coverage, we should probably put some coverage in place today to prevent what you're afraid of happening from happening, right? Yeah, and we're teeing up that piece. We got to make sure it's affordable. That's what my job is to do, is to help you make sure it's affordable. Let's figure this out together. So if you want to go on, Keith, real quick to assumption, I'll just run through this real quick. The, the assumption is asking those quality questions. And Keith came into um, you know the beginning of this with some of those quality questions. What are your goals for the meeting today? Um, you know, what are you hoping to accomplish here? Um, Sith Lee Newsome about two to three months ago, did an awesome Monday morning training about asking quality questions. Uh, here's one of the easiest ones to, to ask when you're saying, why did you fill the form out? And they go, oh, because if something happens to my fan or to me, I wanna make sure that my family is protected. You say, have you known anybody that that's happened to? One of the easiest quality questions you could ask and get them talking about, yeah, it happened to my uncle. Yeah, it happened to my cousin. Yeah, it happened to my brother. Yeah, it happened to my coworker. What happened? Oh, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. Well, oh, man, tell me more about that. And all of a sudden, you get them talking. You're building rapport. You're building trust. You're building credibility. And when in about 20 minutes, when you ask them for their social security number and their bank account info and their driver's license number, if you don't have that trust and credibility, you're not going to get it a lot of the time. They're not comfortable enough with you yet. They don't know that you care about them, right? So they don't, they don't trust you with their information yet. This is how you get their trust and in that information is asking these quality questions, especially in the why. You know, when somebody's in, it, somebody comes to you in the why and, and you start diving into 10 or 15 questions deep. My rule of thumb is I never ask less than 15 questions in the why. I did a whole training on 15 questions for the why. And those questions can just be, so what would that look like for you? So if you died, what would she do with the house? Mrs. Smith, is that what you would want? Where do you think you would go? Would you keep the house if, if he were to pass away? What if he were disabled? Would you guys go live with a family member? Where would the kids go? If they're like, yeah, we'd go live with a family member. Oh, do they know that? Right, it's, it's these little questions along the way when we're asking these quality questions in the why that get people's plan out. And the second part, the second time that typically we're asking for the business is when we're saying, would you rather have your plan that you have in place today, which you just told me in the why is your plan that she was going to sell the house and you guys were going to move in with the in-laws. Would you rather have your plan or would you rather put some coverage in place and have the plan that we come up with today or a better plan in place? And they're like, yeah, I'd rather have that better plan. Okay, perfect. Now we just bought a second time. So um, a, lot of, a lot of us get thrown off by the second one, which is distractions. And distractions are going to happen. They're going to haul off and talk about other stuff. They're going to haul off and ask questions that don't really have any relevance or, or bearing. And knowing that we have steps to follow. And we got a very simple process to follow in the real system. We're building rapport. We're establishing credibility. We're doing a role and purpose. We're doing a financial fire drill. We're digging into the why. We're presenting options. We're staying silent until they choose one. We're filling out an application. We're doing a, a lock it down at the end. We have steps to follow. And I know as long as I follow those steps, I'm going to end up as, at a sale. But sometimes a client will throw a curveball in the middle and we'll get flustered and forget that we have steps to follow or forget that we're on step two. We'll go, oh, I haven't established my role and purpose yet, but now I'm showing prices. I just skipped four steps. Probably not going to get that sale. So the more that you can be comfortable with this process and just know this is the step that I'm on, it doesn't really matter to me if somebody throws a curveball question or asks about, well, I met with somebody and they told me about whole life insurance and blah, da, 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 da. And I can quickly answer that question. Just go, yeah, you, most people do this for a term and this is how living benefits work. And so here's what my role is here for you guys today. Uh, first, we're going to do this, then we're gonna do this. And I'm setting up the agenda and the role and purpose. I'm not letting their questions or their distractions take me off of the path of I have steps to follow. Again, I have a recipe. 
I know if I put this much flour and this much water and this much eggs and this much butter and I mix it up and I bake it at a certain temperature, a cake is going to come out. But if I don't put the eggs in and I don't put the water or if I, you know, if I don't bake it at that right temperature, I'm not going to have a cake. And so, you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, I just put water in a pan and I put it in the oven and I expected a cake. That's not how this works, right? You need to have all the ingredients to the sale, whether you're in person, whether you're in virtual, whether you're over the phone. And guess what? When you're over the phone, it's even more difficult because you need to establish that credibility and that trust. And so I do things like uh, diffusing distractions because some of the distractions that comes up is who are you? How do I know you? How do I know you're real? Okay, well, do you have an email address? I asked right off the bat, do you have an email address? Yeah, okay, I just sent you a copy of my license. Just email a copy of my license. Right, they have, now you have my license number. I'm licensed by the state. I've gone through a background check. Can you get a pen and a paper for me so you can take notes along while, while we're talking about this stuff? We're gonna cover a lot of ground and I wanna make sure that you have the notes written down. I get them engaged. Okay, at the top of the, your paper, I want you to write my name, Ryan Federico. Right below it, I want you to write my license number. Awesome. On the left-hand side, I want you to write life insurance. On the right-hand side, I want you to write mortgage protection. I'm going to tell you how the two things work differently. I'm going to explain living benefits and have them take notes about living benefits, right? Like I'm getting them engaged and I'm diffusing all the distractions and having them focused on here's my process. I, need, I know I need to do a role and purpose, a financial fire drill, a why. I need to present them options. I need to assume the sale and I need to fill out an application and lock it down. I'm not letting anything get in the way of that uh, or get me off track way off in, in no man's land, right? So that's, that's the redirect to completion. So that's, that's the assumption part. And, and Keith's going to talk about the, that, the rest of that process. Um, I think we, you know, jumped into it a little bit. Process is about confidence. And you can hear Ryan saying, you know, in the assumption, like, this is what we're doing, right? And right at the beginning of the appointment, a lot of us flinch because we want the sale, we need the money, you know, we have other concerns when they, uh, you know, as Brian Delaney, you said, you know, I go into a furniture store and we go to find furniture. And the first thing we do is we knock on the furniture because we want to see if it's real. And that's what people are doing at the beginning of the appointment when they're like putting up walls. They want to see if we're for real. It's my belief that people don't come to these appointments to buy insurance. They come to these appointments to buy leadership. They come to these appointments to buy direction because they could get it from anyone. So am I going to buy from the person who presents confidently like this is what you should do? Who's uh, authentic and genuine about it? And I love what uh, Kyle just put in the chat about questions are authoritative. Absolutely, to me, right? Statements from agents is called begging. Oh, but you're really gonna be without this and you really need this. And this is a process you should definitely have. Questions are from people in control. Hey, let me ask you a question. What would happen if you didn't have this? Right, just think about the confidence that's being uh, exuded in the difference of those two, right? Confidence comes from repetition, right? We just heard from Shannon how many times she's done this, never having done it before but doing it over and over and over means I know what to expect. And when I know what to expect, hey, I can just sit back and it happens. Oh, uh, you know what, Keith, we're gonna think about it. Okay, cool. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, earlier, we talked about this. If you remember, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I mean, people tell me when they need to think about it, they need to, you know, pray about it. I mean, they need to talk to their dog about it. It just means it costs too much. So remember earlier, we made that agreement. Um, you know, if it costs too much, you'll look me in the eye and you'll say, Keith, it costs too much. When I do that portion, repetition, I never miss that portion because I know that objection's coming. They always say, oh yeah, I'm gonna look at you. I'm gonna tell you it costs too much. Hell yeah. So now when we get to the end and we're presenting options, they're like, oh, we need to think about it. It's like, didn't we talk about this earlier? You said you'd tell me it costs too much. So if you're telling me you need to think about it, is it because it costs too much? Because my job here is to find you options that make sense, right? Yeah, okay, let's work on that together. Repetition, and I'm intentional about it, right? You wanna be intentional about what it is you really want to accomplish here. Do you wanna grow through the insecurity of the nose? Right, a great book that we recommend for everyone to read is Go For No. 
go for no. Right, a quick uh, story from go for no. I know we're coming up against time is little girl asks her dad, hey dad, can I have a cookie? Dad's like, no, it's too late, no cookie. Girl comes back, hey dad, can I have a cookie? Hey, I just said no cookie, it's late, go to bed. Daddy, can I have a cookie, please? I told you, no cookie. Daddy, I really want a cookie, can I have a cookie? Sweetheart, no cookie, go to bed. All right, dad, but can I just have a cookie? All right, damn it, here, take a cookie, go. That's go for no. That's the concept, right? Uh, most people will say no four times. I think it's 80% will say no four times before they say yes. Can you wait through the no's? Have you done this enough time to know that the no doesn't mean no to you? It just means not yet not yet. And I'm going to keep moving. Intentionality through that process is completely about choice. Being a symmetry is completely about choice. If you're not here to protect families, why are you here? Really? And protecting families is about being confident in my craft. So if I'm not confident in my craft, what am I doing here? Right? Like Ryan said at the beginning, am I working on this process? Uh, let's see if I can move this yeah, slide I, properly. I think, I think that's ahead. it, right? So just to kind of wrap this up. So the mindset feeds the action. Okay. So when, when you have that proper mindset, this is, this is awesome self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy here. When you believe that they want to sell and you're, or that they want to buy, you prepare for the objections, right? Guess what happens is you sell more. And when you sell more, what happens is you get into action more and you get on a roll and you get into momentum and you go, oh man, this is great. I'm selling, I wanna do more of this, I wanna make more money, I wanna help more families, awesome. And then the more that you do that, the better you get at it. And that's the repetition. And then the better that you get at it, the better the mindset you have at it, because now you just believe you can do it. So it's this cycle of having the right mindset, doing the activity, getting the wins, going back into that, that, uh, that repetition and then getting more mindset that you can continue doing it. It's a, it's a circular motion that continues to improve and improve and improve. And this is not just in sales. This is in anything that you do. This is the golf analogy that we used earlier or any hobby that you have or any skill that you wanna pick up. It's that same cycle over and over and over again. And here's the cool thing. And we'll kind of, I'll go into the critical period concept after this. This all comes from the four cornerstones of success. The mindset is the belief in what you're selling. Right? The action is work and counsel. The process is commitment to ongoing self-improvement and associating with the right people is what keeps you in that triangle right? of belief and working and counseling and committing to getting better. Uh, th this isn't something that we just came up with. These are principled success uh, or success principles, right? Strategies that have been in the industry, have been in uh, you know, humanity for a very long time that symmetry has contained within the four cornerstones, right? And so why this is so important is because we want to talk about the critical period concept. And we're going to give you a couple little things that you can say in the critical period concept that have helped me, things that have helped Keith, uh, things that have helped a lot of people in our agency write critical period or equity protection plan. But it starts off with the beginning of your, before you even make the call, before you even set up the appointment with somebody, knowing that you're there to get them some protection. And that protection may be their entire mortgage. That protection may be six months of payments. That protection may be half their mortgage. That protection may be a disability coverage or an accidental death or a guaranteed issue. Whatever it is, having something is better than having nothing. And my goal is just to help them have something, some barrier to ease that concern. Because if there's 1% of people that filled out that letter that, you know, so we get about a 1% return, and then there's an even smaller percentage of people that set an appointment with us. And then there's an even smaller percentage of people that show up for that appointment. I'm already dealing with the people who have a deep concern. They have something in their heart or in their mind that has them in a fearful place, even subconsciously, that would allow them to read that letter and not just go trash and throw it away. That made them pick up that phone and go through the process of meeting with me they have a concern and my job is to get it out. Once that concern is out and they're like, yes, my life would be in a bad place if something happened, they'll buy a $5,000 policy because it's what they can afford. 
They'll buy a $300,000 policy if it's what they can afford. They'll put six months of coverage in place because it's better than zero. They'll do what they can. And it's my job to meet them there. Is they, if they can afford 17 bucks a month, great. That's what we're going to do. We're going to write a $17 a month policy. And guess what? When we meet them where they are, guess what they give us? More people. They know that we're there for them. They know that we're not there to make only our money. So they, they go, hey, can you help my brother? Can you help my sister? When you say, is there anybody else you know who's in the same situation as you that I can you know, maybe talk to and, and get them covered? They're more than happy to give you five or six or seven referrals. You become much more profitable. Your PPL goes through the roof. We ask these very simple questions, the five R's at the end of the appointments. That's why our PPL is like 600, right? As an agency is because we ask for that we ask for referrals, we ask for, and we make those impacts on people. So let's just go real quick through a couple, a couple different options for the critical period protection. And I wanna give you the, the most simple one that I ever got. And it came from the Edward Pritchett Altitude Conference. Uh, Keith Fonseca and I were there at um, a producer's panel. And there was another producer there who's an agency owner in Florida, her name's LaShawn Toyer and she's in uh, Nancy Dominguez's hierarchy in, in the Pritchett organization. And she said, I sit down with people and I say, why did you fill out this form? And they say, well, if something happens to me, I want the house to be paid off for my wife. And LaShawn turns and looks them dead in the eye and says, well, I can guarantee you one thing, something is going to happen. I promise you, you're going to die. There's no question, we know that. We know something's going to happen. She looks him dead in the face and says, something's going to happen. And then she says exactly what Casey Watkins says. When that happens, wouldn't it be great if the insurance company called you up or the, sorry, she says the mortgage company called you up and the mortgage company says, hey, Mr. Smith, we just heard that your wife died and you know what? we're gonna take care of the mortgage for six months. We're, we feel so bad for you. We're, we're gonna pay the mortgage for you for six months. Wouldn't that be awesome if they did that and they called you? And people are like, yeah, it'd be awesome. And she goes, they're not going to do that. But they've just sold themselves on that a six month of mortgage payment policy they'd be stoked with. Mortgage company's not going to do that. They want their money, you know, come rain or shine, sleet or snow. They don't care, right? We got people <laughs> like mortgage companies need to get paid. And so it's like, hey, what, we're gonna, what we may do today here is we're going to get you a policy that covers the mortgage for six months. And then the, the, uh, the biggest tip that I ever got for that critical period concept or that equity protection plan, we're going to go through a couple more strategies here in the few minutes that we got left, was to give that money a job. So let's say it's six months of payments. Let's say I'm, I'm doing a critical period and, and that's what they can afford. And it's a, it's a $15,000 policy and it's six months of mortgage payments. And that's what we're talking about. Give that money a job. What is it going to do for them? This money is going to pay for your mortgage for a few months and allow your wife to get the house on the market. It's going to put a coat of paint on the house. It's going to clear out all the stuff that's in this house right now. Who's going to clear this out? A moving company is going to come in and take all this stuff out of here and get you moved. How are you going to do that? You're grieving the loss of your husband. You're grieving the loss of your wife. Um, what's, when stuff is tied up in probate, how long does it take to get social security transferred to another person uh, income? How long does it take to get a pension transferred to another person's income? This stuff takes months if you guys have ever been around it. It's not just like instantaneous the next day it happens. These are all the things that this product is going to do for you, this $10,000 policy, this $5,000 policy. It's gonna give you time and it's gonna give you control over the process, right? You're, you're not going to have to just uh, operate at the will of the mortgage company and short sell your house and lose all the equity that you've built over 15, 20 years of, of putting money into this home uh, because you have to short sell it because you don't have enough money to pay for the mortgage while it sells and you have to sell it wholesale, right? It's, it's giving that money a job, but having them sell themselves on that, like, wouldn't it be nice if the mortgage company would take six months and, and just give you six months of the mortgage payments when they heard that you died? That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, they're not going to do that. And, that, and that is a really laugh. good point, guys. If you want to take that notes, that's something I've never heard of. So I learned yeah. something right there. Tony, let me tell you, let one. me tell you how I address it. Yes. Yeah, so I never get anyone object to the critical period concept, the equity protection, uh, because I explain it 
really early in my process um, as something different, right? It just, it was weird. It occurred to me, whoever said mortgage protection was paying off the entire mortgage. I mean, we just assume that, right? So early on in my role and purpose, when I'm explaining mortgage protection, I'll go through, hey, you know, mortgage protection used to look like this. You pay some money to the banks and it would pay off your mortgage. Life insurance looks like this. You pay some money to life insurance and when you die, you get a lump sum. Mortgage protection looks like this. It protects your most valuable asset, which is your ability to earn income. And there are multiple ways you'll lose your income. Number one is if you pass away. But the biggest one is if you become permanently and totally disabled. What are you doing then? Because now you can't earn income. So here's how mortgage protection works. There's two kinds. One is a full mortgage payoff. But sometimes we can't afford that. Depends on our age, depends on our medical profile. Then there's mortgage payments. Mortgage protection is mortgage payments. And this is how we provide you options. We give you six months of mortgage payments or 12 months or 24 months or 36 months, whatever you can afford. So by the time we get to presenting you options, I'm gonna give you a full mortgage payoff option. I'm gonna give you somewhere in between that maybe it's a half mortgage payoff option. And then I'm gonna give you a certain number of months and you're gonna pick the one that makes you most comfortable, right? Because at yeah. this point, we don't even know if you qualify and we gotta fill out an application. Yeah. And so I never get an objection at the end. I never get asked, is this, you know, how come it's not this and this? Like they already know before we get there, three options, Pick the one that makes you most comfortable. And the, the thing that I want to kind of wrap up on, because I, I don't want to hold anybody back from appointments that you may have as we're approaching 10 a.m. on the on the Pacific Coast. Um, so this comes back to that M and map mindset, because if you're setting an appointment and then you're doing casework and you got somebody who's like 72 and they got a 30 year mortgage for $400,000, <laughs> you probably know that person's not going to get full mortgage protection. And it would be a really bad idea for you to go in and show them $800 a month from Forrester to Strong Foundations or something like that. So you already know, you know what is going to come up. You know, you're going to have to go critical period. You know, you're going to have to give that money a job. So plan for it. Plan to sh really early on in the sale. Hey guys, this is the, the equity protection plan. I just want to run through it real quick. And I'm going to put a video up here of Samuel Fine uh, in the chat doing the equity protection plan that we worked on at a boot camp here in SoCal that uh, Frank Brennis was at. The equity protection plan is very simple. You meet with somebody, they got a $200,000 loan. You ask them how much would the house sell for if you sold it now, they say 300,000. Awesome, you got $100,000 in equity. So Jim, let me ask you, if you passed away and Mary couldn't pay for the mortgage, who's going to get this equity? Who's going to get this hundred thousand dollars? They'll wait for a minute, wait for them to answer. And they'll go, uh, the bank. Correct. The bank is going to take it in a foreclosure because she cannot pay for the mortgage. Okay. So now as we're going through, when most people fill out these letters, they're looking for the full mortgage payoff, but there's actually the most common type of mortgage protection that people uh, select that most of my clients select is what's called uh, the equity protection plan. Have you ever heard of that? And they'll go, yeah, I've heard of that before. I promise you they've never heard of it, but they'll be like, yeah, I've, I've heard of that before for sure. Uh, and so here's how the equity protection plan works because the full mortgage protection at your age and your health, we can absolutely get it for you. We never want to tell anybody that we can't get them something because then they want it, right? So we can absolutely get it for you, but it's probably going to cost you about as much as the mortgage payment, if not more. And so it wouldn't really, wouldn't really make sense for us to do that. Here's how the equity protection plan works. It's going to pay your, your payments over your mortgage for six months, 12 months, 24 months, as long as, as we can afford and that's going to allow your wife a little bit of time to get the house up on the market, to put a coat of paint on it, to pay the mortgage for six months while it sells, to rent another place, right? To put a down payment on another place. And now when she sells the house, who gets the equity, Jim? She gets the equity. You've just effectively turned a $10,000 whole life final expense product into a $100,000 insurance policy because it allows her access to the $100,000 in equity in the house. 
So I highly suggest you guys watch that video with Samuel Fine. It was at a boot camp. Sorry, we were kind of in and out with the with the video. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's it's a great uh, thing to listen to and, and a great representation. So those things give the money a job. Plan for it early on that you're going to encounter it, right? And and start dropping those hints early on, and practice, right? And and practice, practice, practice. Do as many appointments as you can. And um, we appreciate being able to give back to you guys today. If anybody wants to stay on and, and ask questions, I don't know if you guys got time for that. Tony and, and Kyle, it's kind of up to you guys. Uh, we, we got a little bit of time to, to stay on, but we don't want to hold anybody up. Mm -hmm. we, got, uh, we got time for two questions. Anybody have a uh, question? These guys have really went through this whole entire process uh, on critical concept. Uh, the last 10 minutes, I would highly recommend that everybody that want to have success in this uh, mortgage protection to uh, listen to that over to, uh, to take those notes because there's a lot of good nuggets that uh, Keith threw out, a lot of good nuggets that uh, Ryan threw out. So I highly recommend listening to it again. But here's hey, a chance Ryan, to ask uh, these guys, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to ask a uh, question. Oh. Uh, thank you, uh, guys. Appreciate you both a lot. Um, what brand new agent, what would be like the first three steps that you guys start on virtual sales? I'm just curious because we're making that transition. We didn't jump on the virtual sales uh, as quickly as you guys did. And just yeah, curious because yeah. we're all starting new agents every week as agency owners. So what, what are kind of your beginning steps for that? 100% Kyle. That's a great question, man. We've, you know, yep. we've had to struggle with that over the last six months too, with building an agency and growing and what it's come down to is this. I feel like sometimes, um, like at least we have a tendency to forget that, and we just expect that like, oh yeah, when we were going in home, all new agents appointments just showed up and they were there and nobody ever got porched and it was never a problem with them getting in the house and it, like, like it didn't happen before virtual selling. And so with, with new agents, like we know that most new agents first appointments aren't gonna show up, whether it's in person or whether it's on the phone, because they're not really setting an appointment, they're just happy that somebody didn't say no. And so it's like what, what's happening at least right now in Symmetry, and hopefully you guys can all kind of uh, maybe disconnect from this a little bit, is there's so much information and there's so much training. If you go on the telesales tab, there's 60 hours of video. And what we've done that's been really successful is we've dialed it back to like, what were we doing when we first started going in home? I would have a new agent that would come in, Kyle, you probably did the same thing. I know you did the same thing because I've heard Sean Kim's story, right? They would set an appointment, they'd call me, we'd do the casework together. I'd say, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go into the house. You're gonna number one, make a friend with them. Number two, you're gonna ask them why they filled the form out. Number three, you're gonna show them these three prices we just came up with. Number four, you're going to ask them which one they want and fill out an application. And if you get lost in that process, call me. And that's it. It's not a 15 slide Zoom. It's not getting into the role and purpose or the financial fire drill or the why. And like right now we have such a disconnect because every new agent kind of sees all this stuff and thinks they have to learn all this stuff. And being able just to come back to that very basic, here's the four steps to make a sale. If you set 15 appointments, we know three of them are going to buy we know that this process is going to get you some wins and get you some money and get you going. Um, and then once you get going and you have some of that confidence, great. Now let's, let's mix in the role and purpose and let's mix in the financial fire drill. And, and so like, uh, I feel like we went too advanced. We forgot the step that we normally would just go through with any new agent going in home. And so we've gotten a really good, I think, at going back to that and keeping new agents just super focused on those four things make a friend, ask them why they filled the form out, show them the three prices we just came up with, ask for the business, fill out the application, right? Say which one you wanna choose. And, um, and then once they've made a couple sales and we're going, awesome, man, now let's spend your next week just doing great role and purposes. Just like I would do with anybody going into, into a home new. And awesome, you're good at the role and purpose, now let's spend the next week doing five amazing financial fire drills. And if you come out of this week doing five financial fire drills that you feel stoked with, it's a win. And so we're building momentum on these small little things, you know? And so that's what I would suggest is like, it's, there's so much information and so much training, which usually isn't a bad thing, but right now I think new agents are putting way too much in front of just the basics of selling that you've known Kyle since prepaid legal and even before that, you know what I mean? That like just those simple basics of connecting with a human being. 
um, is, I think, paramount right now. You know what? Uh, what I like about virtual sales guys is that uh, it's so easy to train somebody. You know, thousands of miles away. Uh, for example, if I'm showing John how to do virtual sales, I can even actually get on the virtual sales and mm -hmm. be there with him to just step in and support him. And this is that's why, guys, I highly recommend that uh, you uh, learn this virtual sales. It's I mean, you can have a virtual sales ride along. You know, I know, like for me, I mean, yeah. I mean, I used to go to <laughs> fly to different states to, to ride along with somebody or have them fly, uh, like drive here and, and we would do ride along. But now, I mean, we just cut all the time. And just, I, some, I can just do a virtual sale with a brand new agent thousands of miles away and right, just yeah. be there for them. So Guys, we do that all the time. We do yeah. that. We do virtual selling like that all the time with people um, as observers and as people who are running the appointments. Um, but I want to say like, if you wanted to meet with me and my wife, we would much rather like 99% meet you virtually than have to clean up our house and put the dogs away and figure out what the heck's going on with the kids. And people want to do it this way. They may be a little bit scared to do it this way. We may need to take some extra steps in walking them through, like my email template to people and, and walking them through has a step-by-step. -step. Here, click on this link. And then it's got a screenshot of what Zoom is gonna look like. Click on this right here that says join from web browser. When Zoom pops up, click on the microphone to join the audio. I've got a step-by-step -step for people and I call them and walk them through that step-by-step -step and go, awesome, you've seen us. And if it takes them 15 minutes to get on Zoom, I go, don't worry about it. I, you know, like you're doing great. Most people take 20 minutes. If it takes them 20 minutes, I'm like, don't worry about it. You're doing great. It takes most people 30 minutes to get on Zoom. Don't problem, you're killing it. You're crushing it. Like meet people where they're at because then once they get on and they feel that that accomplishment, you don't realize it, but they're buying from you. You're getting that trust and that credibility along the way. Um, and I've met husband and wife on their lunch break from work where husband worked at a different company and wife worked at a different company. We met on Zoom and got an app done, right? The, the flexibility in this time zones, you know, starting earlier, if you're on the East Coast working later and working the Pacific time zone or something is, is just phenomenal. So again, plenty of reasons to, to want to learn this, uh, but it, it has to start with you really wanting to get good at this. Keith, you want to say anything else? No. You, no. All right. Yeah, this is why I partner with Ryan Federico. <laughs> Anybody else have questions before we jump? You guys are the best, man. We, we uh, sincerely are available for anybody on the call. Uh, this team has poured so much into us and our team. Like we can do uh, nothing or pay how much we've gotten from this team. So please, hey, well, I, just, on uh, us. Yeah. I wanted to ask you guys just from a dream building, Hey, what's your like best uh, income months from virtual sales or team? Just cause you know, it's always good to end on a high note. I mean, that's why we're yeah. ultimately in this business and just tell us kind of what, what, what are your summer peaks levels for like income? Go ahead, Keith. You got Mine's the biggest little... personal one. Yeah, that's a little embarrassing. I in May I wrote 60k, uh, in June I wrote 60k, and in July I wrote 72,000 on my run to winning the Pura Vida contest. Uh, in July, uh, because in June I'd issued somewhere around 50 something thousand, I got a bonus from Symmetry of 2,500. Uh, Edward Pritchett matched it, sent me another 2,500. I sold uh, Debt Free Life. Now it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, that included $30,000 of insurance and a $120,000 transaction that moved from uh, his bank account into Forrester's. And that was 100% virtual. I've never met him in person. We've never shaken hands, uh, but we've, we've come very close. So there's, you know, some of my personal wow. highs, Kyle. Yeah. 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 And my, my goal has always been uh, to, to write, a, to issue about 15,000 a month has always been my goal. And like last year, I did 150,000 and right on it. My goal is always 15,000 a month, 10 new contract packets in or double digit new contract packets in and double digit writers has always been my goal. And so the biggest month we had in issued as, a, as an agency was a little over 150,000 uh, last year, virtually as an agency, nobody going into the home and that's in a month. Um, and, you know, I personally I've, you know, had plenty of months that, you know, stuff is issued and I've been over, you know, especially annuities and stuff like that, where I've made 20, $25,000 in a month, but, you know, to be able to build a passive income and to have an agency 
that that issued 150,000 in my first, you know, 18 months in the business or, or something like that is, is pretty cool. And now getting to a place where that's just like normal um, is, is, is pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and duplicating quickly because of the virtual uh, model. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we, uh, we appreciate you guys and uh, anything thank you, you again, reach out to us. We love you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, guys. Mm. Amazing, amazing train. Thank you.